Hello, Smiley. Um, in this tutorial that I'm going to be making is uh, on the Iron Man faceplate. I saw the one that I did earlier and I didn't really like it, so I went ahead and redid it for you. Hopefully this one will be a little bit quicker, um, a little bit easier for you to understand, and a little bit more smooth in the way that I talk and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender. And pl um, plus, one of the things that I didn't like about it was I didn't show the cursor, and I felt like that that was very important, especially in tutorials, because you want to. I would like for everybody to see where I'm pointing at and stuff um, on the screen, and it helps a lot, especially you know you guys that are just new to it. Oh, I, oh yeah, um, for you uh, YouTube people, if I stick this on YouTube. Um, um, this w originally is a pri private tutorial, so just bear with me uh, if I use specific names or anything. Open it up. And what I'll be actually, actually I'll show you what I did before I go and get started. And just to show you, you know, some stuff that I did, I'm going to go ahead and render out something, show you guys what I did. While I do that, and just let it render. I have a Windows XP computer with two gigabytes of RAM, so my computer is a little bit slow. But it really doesn't matter which version you have and stuff. But yeah, this is Iron Man. As you can see, kind of a little bit bumpy right there. There's little things that I need to touch up on. It's kind of rough in some places, but it's what I'm working on. I just got this concept myself, so uh, yeah. And here, here he is right here. And I'll go ahead and open up a new one. Reload, start a file. Yeah. And so the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna just delete this cube. And actually, I probably should start up my display so you guys can see it. There we are. And yeah. Then the next thing that you need to do is you need to load in your background image. And just do that by clicking this right here and add background image or add image. And then you open it up and you find the image. Mine is, is stored on the desktop. And I'll go ahead and open helmet. Yeah. And as you can see, you can't see it just yet. That's because you have to go into ortho view. Do that by pressing the 5 button. And then go into the front view. And there you go. I specifically like this picture because it shows you both a lot of detail on the, um, the right side and the front. You can use whatever image you want for this. It really doesn't matter. But yeah. I, I like to turn the opacity all the way up. And there we go. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to add a plane in. So I'll go ahead and do that. Oops. No, not that. I'll shift A, add mesh, plane. And I'll I'm sorry guys. I'm clicking all over the place. I need to centerize my cursor. There we are. Okay. So I'll add my mesh. Plane. And there we go. And then the first thing you need to do is rotate that on the 90 degree and then on X, X, there we go. And I want to go into wireframe mode because you're going to want to see what's behind you. And that's our start for the um, Iron Man faceplate. Um, but what you should do, what you should keep in mind is you don't want to move around your mesh. You don't want to move it to whatever's on here because that'll just get confusing and you'll end up with a weird looking um, uh, Iron Man. What you should do is you need to add, uh, move around your image. That's the best way to do it. So I'm going to just click around on here until I like where I have it. Oh, by the way, this is X, this is Y. X is for left and right, Y is for up and down. So, I'm going to 
move this right over here. There. And then I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to do a loop cut with control R and do it vertically. And then I'm going to go into face mode. Click the face. Click that one. X. And then delete the face. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to add in a modifier right over here, just this French tool over here, and it's called Mirror Modifier. And what this does is it basically copies whatever you have on the side, so if I move this around up here, it'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Turn on clipping, and close it up, and you don't need it anymore. And there we go. And then one setting you need to make sure you have is your axis on your images. Make sure that you have that on front, whatever side that you have it hooked up to. So there we go. You can lower that one and add a new image. I'm going to add the exact same image. Now put it in here. Put it over here. It kind of looks strange at first. Turn up the opacity. Select the axis. You want that to the right side. And then close that one up as well. Then what you do is you press the 3 button on the numpad to go to your right side. And now, uh, I'm gonna turn, I think that's slowing down my system. Yeah, let's bring that back up, sorry guys. Um, and also, oh, wrong side. Just m move your, um, your picture to it's about this little, this little thing right here. is um is about at the edge of your um, image like that's good it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always adjust it later um, yeah and there you go and then after I do that just press N because you don't you don't need that toolbar anymore or pr and press T because you don't need this right now and then one thing that I like to do especially when working on a um a uh, a mesh that has a diagram that has both the right and the left I mean right and the front um axes what you want to do is you make another screen another 3D viewport and to do that you see this little bumpy thing right up here and you right click that and move it to about the center now you have two of the exact same things and all I have to do is just move your mouse into the middle of one and you can mess around with it. You can zoom in right here and it does affect that. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to change this one to the front view and this one I'm going to keep it the left view or the right view. And then now that I've gotten that worked out, what I want to do is I want to go to the edge and select this edge over here and grab it on X and move it to about right there the edge of his eye. And then you select the bottom one and move it down until it hits that edge of that faceplate right there. And move it up. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I found it is find it's always easy if you can um if you can um you don't have more than you need. Like I'm I'm not scaling this all over the place over the entire place that I'm going to do it yet because I don't like that. It's it's a lot easier if you work with the stuff that you put down yourself. And you don't want more than you uh, you don't want more faces or um, vertexes than you need. That's why I'm not starting out with a, a square or a, a sphere or anything else like that because it, it's a lot easier this way. This is the way I, that I found it to be the easiest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this um, this left edge right here and extrude it on the x-axis until it gets about right there. Just about the same length because you don't want it more than that. And then you grab vertexes and you move it to until it hits one of these lines on the faceplate. There we go. And then you 
do the exact same thing, extrude x, about the same length, about right there. And then you grab the vertexes and you adjust it. And don't go like crazy detail at first. Don't go like, um, you don't want to go like a half, a point one, move at point one or anything like that. Because you can always go back later and make loop cuts to make it smaller, subdivide it and all that good stuff, to make it smaller so that you can put in the detail that you want. So I'm going to go back to the edge, extrude X, grab Z, move it to these, this edge right here. Do the same thing, extrude, X, about the same spot, grab Z, grab Z again, on this one, and there we are. And if you guys want to see what it looks like so far, mm, not much, but that's okay because we'll always go back later on. And now, what we want to do is we want to actually make a a cut on the center. Wait a minute. You know, I'm going to keep this one up because that just messes everything up. So I'll go ahead and do it like that, right in the center, just for now. And I'll move these down because it's, I want them on this this eye line right here and that works back good and then you go over to the you can finally start working on this side so and what I, what I like about this scene is you can grab one on here and go over here and grab it on the Y and move it oops this one's not in wireframe mode there we go um, grab Y so and here's the concept, here's the basic, basic concept for you guys that just want to you watch this for like five minutes and you want to want to try it yourself Im immediately. Here's the concept. Basically, all you have to do is match up whatever's on this side with whatever's on this side. For example, I'm going to take this right here, the very tip, grab it, Y, right there. Okay, that's pretty simple. Move on to this guy exact same thing grab Y except you want to grab it to about halfway because that's where it is this face I mean this vertex is about halfway from here to here pretty simple this right here very end so do that one very end pretty simple same thing with this one grab it over here move it till you hit one of these these lines right here same thing with this. So that is the bare, the bare, bare concept. Everything else that I'm showing you is for you guys that feel like you'd learn a lot more if you watch, if you would just watch me do it. And that's perfectly fine. I'm willing to do that. So I'm actually going to move this over here so that when I adjust it, it'll look more realistic because I will move this on the X a little bit more I just you just need to set up your your uh, what you call it your um you need to set up both your X bear and then this bear to get a um to get everything working pretty good and just keep on working on the outside of it And you'll have to do do these type of things a lot. And it's pretty slow, but eventually you'll get to the point where it's no problem, and it's just just so much fun. You don't care, you know. I'm actually gonna move this one. I try this out in this video and see how this works. And there we go. And then. 
then you move down to this guy. Oh, that one's already cinderized pretty good. Grab this I. And I can't see that. Okay, grab Y. At the edge right there, and don't don't move it to this m this other part right here because that's the actual it's the 3D part of it because it kind of indents in a little bit his eyes. So yeah, that part right there can catch you off guard if you're not watching what you're doing. And you just set that up. And there we go. Now, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to move this down. Grab it and move it down. I can start to do a little bit more of detail work. Grab a Y. And you always want to, after you do that, adjust each and every one. So, so now it's in this proper position. Grab that just a bit more. Right there. And same thing with this. Grab it. Just about right there. And here's a guy here here's a basic look of what what it looks like so far. Not much. But that's fine. And now I'm going to go ahead and make another loop cut. Let's try up here first. And let's even out all of these. Kind of... Oop, actually, no, I don't... I'm going to move my loop cut down just a bit. So, control R, and you drag it down to about there, because I want to get this eye in there pretty good. And grab this Z right on here. Same thing. Grab Z. Let's grab this guy and move it over here. I'd like to try that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Now. You start moving everything on the Y. And it's pretty easy w once you start moving everything around. Because basically, you just move it on the Y until it hits hits one of these sides. This guy, he, whoever drew this guy, I wish I knew the name of it because he did a really good job. Um... He d did such a, a good job. It's it's there's not much error in between all these areas, so I I really like this one. And if you find if you find another one, that's that's perfectly cool with me. I don't care. Just as long as you have a good um a good enough um one that you feel like you like. And now I'll make another loop cut up here in the center to get there we go. And just start moving things around. It's always good to start on like the outside and then work your way in or into the middle and then work your way out. It it just to me that works the best. Uh, I forgot to move these in. It just works the best that way. There we go. And this guy's still inside of it pretty good. So that looks about halfway. Before long you'll have yourself a 
awesome looking Iron Man. But don't get discouraged if it doesn't look like him yet. Cause I mean just like just like artists for all you guys out there that I love just drawing and stuff like that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You you start out very, very simple and you just keep on adding to it and going through this process over and over and over and over until you have this masterpiece. That people are like, Whoa, that looks so cool. I also feel like this one needs to be moved down. Just a smidge. There we go. And I'll make a cut over here as well. There we are. Move this one on the Y. Just to this outside one. And this you kind of you kind of follow this inside spot a little bit. Sometimes you you just go and trying to go a little bit faster. That always works too. And there we go. Just keep on working on it and stuff until it gets just right. Now we can start working on a little bit more. Oops. Wait a minute. Let's see, man. Maybe we need to grab these up Z. and then move it on the Y because it's perfectly aligned on the Y Y and there we go no it needs to be moved about there there we go and that looks good let's, let's see how she looks so far it's getting there one thing I like to do when I'm working on stuff you can go and open up the toolbar and get out of edit mode and then click smooth. There we go. And then close that one up. And that gives you a little bit of a picture of what it looks like. And I also like to get my camera right here. Get out of that. Move it on the right. Of it and then take a picture. I forgot about that. I didn't set up my scene yet. You always want to make sure you have a good lighting system as well. Let's do eight, eight, minus shift D, eight on the Y, minus. And there we go. Now we have a good even. Yeah, and there she, there it is. Pretty good so far. And I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this back into the front view. And if this camera gets annoying, all you have to do is just go and click your eyeball thing in there. It's off. Get back into it. And I think, you know, I'll, I'll make another loop cup real quick, and then it'll make it pretty good so let's now you can work on a vertical loop cut now at least that's what I'm gonna be doing and I'll grab this down on the Z oops I need this side needs to be on the um, <laughs> so I can make sure that I'm getting everything right don't want to mess up over this side and then Grab this down. Yeah, and that looks pretty good over here. And this right here ne also needs a loop cut because I see this right here needs to be scooted in. Just little things like that. You just need to. Once you get familiar with your tool settings, for you guys that are new new to the are new to the um, the Blender setup and everything, um, it just just comes natural what you're supposed to do. See, so just 
make loop cuts, make miniature um, adjustments. I always try to keep everything aligned as much as I can. Like that needs to move up just a smidge. And then adjust everything as much as you need to. Because, I mean, who's going to mind you adjusting something? It always look cool. And then make your loop cut. I want to make mine another vertical cut. Such as that. Grab a Z. Just a smidge of it right there. And there we go. Now, to further my model, I want to make another loop cut right here. Eventually, you'll get the hang of it, and um, it just comes natural. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another loop cut right here. Cause I've, yeah, I'm actually noticed that this right here is supposed to. Um, So I'm going to move this out of line on a free grab. Same thing with this one. Also the same thing with this one. This one can be moved. How about that? Completely forgot to move these guys up here. Sometimes you forget to do things. You'll notice it later, though. And now to make the distinct, you know how it has these little things right here. These right here are kind of flat. To make it distinct like this, all you have to do, and this is really cool. I like it a lot. Grab this down. Here, this is the coolest thing. You're gonna love it. In order to make, um, let me get out of that real quick. In order to make these things, because this right here is supposed to be real flat. Well, in order to make that, all you have to do is just loop cut, bring it to the edge. I always do it for like 0.9, or you just grab it. Ah, stencils. There we go, and bring it to the edge like this. You can select like this side, for example, and look at it. Now, if you go to this, it's flat. It's edgy. Because some of it's edgy, and then some of it's smooth. That's perfectly cool, you know? And now you have the smooth side. It, it kind of messes up the smooth um, tool to make it just flat. It's, it's something that I found out, and I like a lot. Now, now there is one thing, though this right here you don't want this side because this is part of this part of the face so all you have to do is just right click two of these then you merge and you do the last right click this shift right click this alt m last same thing right click well no Yeah, and then merge right there. And if you need some like that, see, pretty cool. And there you go. And if you want to do it, um, this is. If you also want to do it on this side as well, if you also want to make it so it's kind of flat on this side as well, you can go and do the same thing. And I won't have to adjust it close as you can sometimes yeah there you go and see how she looks 
that looks perfectly awesome, perfectly fine right here, because it, now that's a distinct part of it. Okay, sorry about that, I was doing some, uh, somebody walked in the room. Okay, let me centerize my cursor, there we go. And I'm gonna do, my next cut is gonna be over here, making it kind of smooth over here as well. Um, cause I like that, I like that, um, that edge right there, it looks real cool. So I'm gonna get out of that, and go back into edit mode, and make my cut right here, move it up into the edge of this part right here, and there we go. And of course, because we don't want this side right here, let me put this in Z, we don't, we want to make this kind of flat, just individually by itself. Um, We'll put this one, alt M, last. Same thing over here, alt M, last. And I think that's good. Let me go out of that mode and check. That looks good to me. Okay. And then to complete it, I'll be doing another loop cut. Oops, what? Did I just do no? Added rigid rigid bodies. Oops. I didn't want to do that. Whatever. Um, rigid bodies is just an animation thing. I don't want to animate it just yet. <laughs> Last. Just a bunch of. There's a bunch of different things you can do, and let's see how she looks. Let's render it out. And there we go. Cool. So far, so good. And, of course, I want to... This is probably the, the most satisfying part right here. Um... You're gonna take out his eyeballs. You're gonna take out Iron Man, his eye. You just select, oops, you don't want that. I'm gonna erase that. You just select all your faces inside the eye, and then press X, delete faces. And now, we have Iron Man. Cue the music and all that cool stuff. There we go. No matter what it seemed to do, it always seems to have that kind of indent right there. I don't know. Maybe you guys can figure out something, but it's like, it's it's annoying me. Yeah, okay. That looks pretty cool so far. Let's go and render it out and see how it looks. It's, the lighting is a little bit different because I'm having lights from all sides. Let me actually change the light types real quick. Change this lamp to a not a hanging. You know, I'll just keep the same for for now. Um, whatever. Yeah, and then the next part. This will add a lot to your Iron Man figure. Is we're gonna extrude this out. I'm going to grab all these faces right here and we want to extrude. Extrude all the way over here to about like that. Looks good right there. I'm going to just move it out right here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually see I'm actually making this next part right here. So I'm going to go and set everything else up on the x-axis and then I'll move it around and the right axis hmm, there we go just working it in there this add a lot to mine And 
when I'm finished with this, I always make a new a new object just because it's a lot easier to store them all. Um, and, and then if later on I want to make a movie, I just I can put them all into the same object if I want to. And now we can start working on them over here. Yeah, grab Y. Move it to that point right there. Grab Y. Move it to this point as well. I feel like that needs to be moved down here. Strange. Yeah, that's one of those examples of um not being perfectly aligned on both sides. I'll just make a loop cut later on and that'll solve it. I'll go ahead and make my loop cut right here. Move it on the way. Hey, there we go. And then, for our special loop cut, to make it nice and flat. There we go. There we go, that's looking more like Iron Man. I don't know about you, but I think that looks even more better than the one that I did. <laughs> than the one that I did earlier. But I'm on my own. And I'm gonna go, because this is, this is basically what you should do. You can just repeat this step as many times as you want. Um, to create the results that you want. But then I'm gonna show you a um, a texture or a material that I felt was that looked pretty cool. So I take my blue and I move it down all the way until get this nice yellow color. You turn up the intensity all the way. Then you get specular. And you move this down to a, a tannish color. And that looks pretty good. Then you go down to your mirror. Click that on, open it up. Click it on and open it up. Turn the reflection. Pretty good. As much as you want. And then you bring down the blue until you get a good tan color. And this just this right here is just the color of your reflection. And that's my gold color. Render it out. And now you have an Iron Man. I like to always add in a floor, so I'll go and do that now. Plane. Grab Z. Scale 8. One second, the dog just. I hear the dog at the door. Sorry about that, left the dog outside when I was taking him out. Okay, and after that. I like to keep a, 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 a nice plane, and if I do it like this, then I can sort of, it sort of gives it a good reflection color. That's too much reflection right there, I think. Doesn't need that much reflection. So, what I'll actually do is I'm going to turn down my reflection from your amount. Because you don't want too much, just enough. And you can play around with that settings. Just enough so that it picks up a little bit of detail. Gives it a golden look like it's an actual golden object. And then if you really want to have some fun, I always do this too. Same thing. 
grab this, except I, I turned it all the way down. So it's a black color. Oh, I'll turn that up all the way. It's sort of a grayish tint. And then I have my mirror. All the way up. Oh, not all the way up. I still want some color in there. And then you render it out. <laughs> okay, so that's my tutorial. I hope you guys like this. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And if you guys have any questions or things that you think I can do better, just let me know. For you, Smiley, you can just tell me in person. Um, I'll probably stick a link for the um, the image. If not, just look up Iron Man diagram or something, and you should you should find um, that picture. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys like that. See you next time.